Finally, we here. Y'all already know. Quit playing. <laughs> the man running the industry right now, man. Stop playing with me. Hey, Don't man. Right. You know, I just interviewed Dr. Rose. Um, Because, you know, now this year I'm starting to do entrepreneur interviews. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the most heavily requested, you know, especially on the female side. Like, yeah. a lot of people wanted to know your story. Because you just came out of... I know you've been working for a long time. Because, you know, when I interviewed Asian Dog, Cuban Dog before, you was around right. in the early stages. But it's like now, 2019, 2020... You're the talk of the city. You're the talk of, you know, hairstylists. You're the talk of um, female entrepreneurs. A lot of people look at you as their business model, man. How does it feel? And did you even expect this moment to happen as far as you being one of the hottest in the music industry? I already knew it was going to happen. You already knew? I already knew it was going to happen. It was part of the plan. You know, it was yeah. part of my plan. It was my game plan yeah. to strategically get to where I'm coming, you know, where I'm in now. Yeah. But it was just all a process. So, you know, you had to... Just, you know, just keep grinding. Yeah. You know, I have to keep grinding and get to where I'm at. Only 23, 22? 22. 22 years old. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing hair for? Going on four years now. Okay, so this wasn't something you was doing in high school or uh, anything like that? At all. What was, you, what was it like in high school for you? Like elementary, junior high, middle school, high school? What was it like for Jonathan then? Like what were you doing back then? I was selling clothes. Selling clothes. Selling clothes. So I started off selling clothes. Then I came a wardrobe stylist. But even in middle school and stuff, I used to just... I used to sell candy. Mm -hmm. I used to just be known for just being a little go-getter. Yeah, know? just hustling. So I just used to always just find little different things to do. But I started off as a selling clothes. Then I turned to a wardrobe stylist. When me and Asian, you know, they started in their industry. Asian mm -hmm. and Cuban, when they first started in their industry, I started off styling them, dressing them, make sure, you know, they look raw. Yeah. And I started doing her, you know. Yeah. So that's how I transitioned to to doing her when I started seeing like, okay, everybody, you know, this is what everybody wants. So I started doing it. Yeah. And I started going viral off of it. It came natural. Yeah. So what high school uh, did you graduate from? I ain't graduate. I just, school wasn't for me. Like I was really like the business type person. Like I was really chasing my dreams. Like yeah. middle school to high school, I was just straight chasing my dreams. And I wouldn't say school it's not needed. I mean, school is very It's much a good needed. networking tool. Yeah, it's a networking tool, but it wasn't for me at that time. And still for me, it wasn't for me now, you know? Yeah. But I still learned how to, you know, maneuver that. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. So you went from dropping out of high school to now driving a Bentley. Driving a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> so you got both. Both of them. Crazy. Yeah. Okay, so you drop out of school. And then you start, you know, you just been hustling. So yeah. you just, you're not even knowing that you're going to do hair. You just doing whatever works at the time. No, see, the thing is, it's really a whole, I started off, see, when I was selling clothes, I knew I would want to do hair. I'm going to get a whole rundown. Yeah. I started off selling clothes, but I was, I had like workers, like people stealing the clothes. Mm. So it, it was just like me coming from nothing. Like I was 15, you know. Dallas, you know how it is when you're coming up from Dallas, it really ain't, you know, too much opportunity, source, yeah. You know? So, I that's when I turned into a wardrobe stylist. I was trying to move away from that lifestyle, just you know, leveling up, yeah. Then I moved into you know, just being a hair stylist. Then I it was just like I went to jail, I went to prison, okay. I had got tw I had got 12 years in prison, but I only did eight months, I only did mm -hmm. eight months, but that was I had violated probation. I had violated probation from being at South by Southwest with Asian, yeah. all of them just, you know, just still grinding, trying to grow. Yeah. And then during that time of my sit down, I was just like, you know what? I'm about to just, you know, refocus everything. So, so wait, 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 wait. So you're what, 19, 18 at the time and you get sentenced to 12 years? No, I was. This was last year. Last year. This was like, no, the year before last. Yeah. 20, this 2020. And you get you get sentenced to, 20, to 12 years. 12 so years. you thinking your life is over. No. Okay. I will, at the time, I would never think, I'm not that type of person that feel like I'm defeated. You know, I feel like I'm going to keep going. Like, no matter what happened, I just know, like, everything happened for a reason. So yeah. it's like, now I'm in this situation, it's like, what do I got to do? You know, so it's not, I'm not going to beat myself down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just try to, you know, make my way, get out this situation. Yeah. So I was like, you know, God ain't going to never, you know, treat me like that. You know, because I ain't no, I'm a humble, I'm a real giving person, you know? Yeah. So when I was down, I was just like, 
I gotta get it. Like, I was reading, working out, getting my mind right, and I came back strong as hell. Yeah. So, can you speak? I mean, the the case is over with, right? Yeah, the case is over. You know, can you speak a little bit on how you know what led to that twelve year sentence? Like, I was on probation. I was on probation since I was younger. Like I said, yeah. since I was about fifteen, I've been on probation. Like yeah. coming out of juvenile, going to adult probation. But like I said, that all led from my previous, you know, from me. You know, stealing, coming to a wardrobe stylist, all that, that led from that, you know? Yeah. So, that's how um, I came from just, you know, that time yeah. of life and coming into a hairstylist. Yeah. Um, okay, so you get out of jail and you're doing hair already, right? Yeah. Um, I was probably doing hair. That's when I, I was just playing with her. Before I went to jail... That's when I was, you know, playing with her, just, you know. But then I knew I could do her. Everybody was already telling me. So when I was in jail, I'm not about to come home and literally kill it. Like, you know, do so much her. You know, yeah. I was only, only had like 12,000 followers mm. when I first came home a year ago. Now, you know, where I'm at now is just like levels. Right. Blowing. I mean, and that's crazy because a lot of people, you know, they go to jail and then they they don't really like to talk about it. But you're 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 really accepting that as you know who you what really happened. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not like nothing that you're trying to run from. No, now and then I never just really told nobody about it either. Yeah. So now I'm just really feel like I just need to go and touch the touch the topic because everybody looking at me now. I'm becoming yeah. a bigger influencer. I want to show people they come from nothing. Or even come from situations that feel like they've been defeated mm. to show them how to actually make it out of that. You yeah. Know? Do you think it uh, is this something that you regret, or do you think that's what needed to happen to discipline needed, you as an entrepreneur? It needed to happen because right before I went, I was just like, I'm a go getter. Like I'm always grinding. Back then, I was grinding. I feel like if I didn't sit down, I would have crashed struck, out. Probably. I would have crashed out. Yeah. Because I worked so hard. Right. And I don't even know. You know when to stop so yeah. it's like god know when to put the right things in your life to slow you down for the right reasons if i didn't get slowed down no telling where i'd be right now right. i know i'll still be you know doing something good or whatever but it could have been for you know so yeah. i feel like everything happened for a reason so i don't regret nothing right um i was an early supporter of asian and cuban um when they first start rapping and you was around early as well like you would always be around like like you said styling them doing their hair um, were you, would you say they were kind of like one of the first ones that like lift off your brand a little bit? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Because that was in the music industry and that's really who I started out with, you know? Yeah. And we all from Dallas. Right. So it's like, yeah, I would say, I would give them that credit where, you know, it started yeah. off from them too. Right. Yeah. Um, where, what is it like today? Is it still the same or, yeah. you know? It's still the same. I still miss with both of them. Like both of them yeah. are still my girl, you know? Yeah. I rock with them the same, you yeah. know? So you get out of jail. And you know you start doing Megan's hair, and now I'm seeing SZA and all these different people. Like, how does that happen? Um, you know, D DJ Duffy and all these different people. Is that word of mouth? Is that like, like how are you doing this? Is it? It's word of mouth, but it's also the grind behind it. Like, yeah. even behind doors, like I'm actually working hard. You know, I really be on some road running stuff. I be out in these different states, yeah. linking with these people. They connecting with my energy. They vibing with who I am. And that's just, you know, yeah. it just, them connections just builds on a better connection. Different people see that. They see that they style is not doing what I'm doing. They're not vibing with they style. Is these style. Like, people don't know how to, you know, act around people. So it's like, people just vibe with me. Yeah. Now, you're in a female-dominant industry. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine the hate you get. Yeah. Do you feel like you get a lot of hate because of you being the male? It's kind of like. I don't even see no hate. No I don't see no way. I don't see nothing like when you're in your own lane, it's like you can't see what nobody Tunnel is doing or nobody else talking about. So it's like I'm just having fun in my lane. I'm riding my own lane, riding my own wave and yeah. just going. Right. Um, do you do you feel like that's why a lot of people do gravitate to you as far as like these artists and these celebrities because you are a male? It's kind of like, you know, um opposite of track type thing. I will say that. I, I can say that, but also it's so many different males that's in the industry too. Yeah. And none of them just like me. You know, everybody got their own sway, but I also feel like people be intimidated or people be like just, they just gravitate to who I am. Like yeah. as a person, like they just vibe with me. Like my energy just be so real. Like it's just yeah. a connection. Right. Man, most definitely. Um, now, lately, well, you know, like the past few months, I'm going to say like mid last year, you and Megan were around each other a lot. Like how did that, how did that, their friendship and how did that, you know, 
whole thing come together? We we from Texas. Mm -hmm. It's just a Texas thing. Like you know, we we been knowing each other for about two years, um, and we just be vibing. Like we just yeah. be going. Like that's my friend. That's my girl. Like yeah. so we just that's how you know. Yeah. So all that friend shit that wasn't planned. It was this real organic shit that went yeah. viral. Yeah, that's real. And that shit just shit. caught on. Yeah. Yeah. Like all my friends, like we all rock like that. You know. So, but me and Megan, we just got a different type of. Fun, like energy with us like yeah. we just more we vibe with her more because you know i don't know we just got that energy with each other yeah um you know I, I do my homework and a lot of people were like yo we haven't seen jonathan and megan together anymore are they cool is it beef like what's the real what's the real shit behind that like because forever that's yeah. one thing about it. we forever but people got to understand when you we are both the brand you know, I don't want to be known as, I mean, I'm not going to say known as, that's my girl, like, that's my friend, we're going to be forever friends. I can go do a her today if I want to. Mm. But it's not that, it's like we both got a brand, and I'm trying to grow, and she see that I'm trying to grow. Yeah. And she's growing at the same time. And, you know, for that time we was together, but it's like, I don't want to get, I don't want to knock my brand down mm -hmm. just from working with one person. One person. I don't want to be known as Megan's hair sellers. Yeah. You know, we, I mean, I'll be known as Megan's hair sellers because we friends, you know, but we are friends, you know, and she got a business and I got a business. We both yeah. just trying to grow and grind yeah. and see how far we can get. Yeah. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Like, people get with somebody and feel like they got to stay right there. Then you got the other people that want to work with you, want to, you know, grow. We grow, we, we young, we 23, 22, you know, we trying to get as far as we can. You know, we can't be with each other every day. Yeah, because a lot of people were like, yo, what's going on? Like, where's the videos at? Like, are they beefing? You know, people always try to find this thing when, you know, when they don't see people every, together every day anymore, it's always something. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say that's just people on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. When you in your own world, like we literally, and that's another thing with me and Megan, we be in our own world. When we together, we don't be saying nothing else. Like we just be having fun, just vibing. Yeah. So we be in our own world. We don't even see really, we see people talking, but we don't, this shit ain't nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can only imagine that, like, because you're only one person. And you have all these people hitting you up in Atlanta, L.A., mm -hmm. Miami, Dallas. Because I know a lot of people here will feel some type of way because you're blown up now. When you can't move how you used to and go to this person and right. do their hair at a drop of a dime how you used to. How You know, what's the, the pros and cons of blowing up and being celebrity hairstylist and everybody want to work with you at the same time? That's the grind. See, that's where I come from. I like the grind. So now that it's my time, I'm taking over everything, every opportunity. Anytime somebody hit me up trying to, you know, get their hair done, I'm on it. You know, I'm. that's why I'm every state. You watching my page, I'm every state, everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because people don't understand the grind behind it. That's why I say I can't work with one person because that's going to stop my creativity, you know? Yeah. That's going to stop me from being inspired from doing what I want to do yeah. because I love to create. I love to inspire people, you yeah. know? So I got to... When I'm done with this person, I'm going to be done with this person doing they her and just sitting around. So why not go on and get a flight booked to Miami, go knock this person out, and then get a flight booked back or to another state and knock these people out all in one day or two days. Yeah. And then be back to, you know. So I'm just a person that's just trying to, like, get there, you know. And, hey. Yeah. Um, but you have fell, fallen out with people that got mad because you didn't move when they wanted you to move. Like, do people kind of get upset with you, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. People don't get us up to me. People, that's another thing. I got this type of energy. People don't play with me. Like, people ain't going to play with me like that because of the simple fact. It's just not that type of energy there to even, mm. you know, it's business, but it's also like, we cool, but it's also business. Yeah. And they respect that. And they see the grind. So, people don't, like, I don't, like Bad Baby, she posted my number on the internet because she got mad I didn't want to do her hurt. When I, when I was doing clients, so it's more so like, but Why she, baby they like, that. like that. You know, she yeah, challenged. So yeah. it's like I would expect that from her. So I posted her number on her. So it's just like, <laughs> uh, you know, a game. But it's like, that's what it is. Yeah. But they don't get mad. They don't get mad. They don't yeah. play like that. Are there any celebrities that you you really want to work with today? Like, yo, I really, I really want to. I've seen you with Dej Loaf and all these different people. It's not nobody that I really want to work with because I look at everybody the same. I look at everybody the same. But I feel like this year. I'm gonna be working with Beyonce. Yeah, I just feel so, it. So that's the goal, Beyonce. That's not the goal, but I just feel it coming. You just feel it coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's one thing? What's one of your biggest pet peeves, as far as working with clients? Like, what's something that that Jonathan doesn't? You don't really fuck with. 
What's something that gets you out of character? When they start, when they be being picky. Like, I'm not that type of person. Like, when when they just, people don't come to me and get their own style. Like, they come to me and I just do whatever I want to do. Mm. So, when I got, like, a couple people, like, brats, like, sizzle them, they real bready. Like, they real bready. Like, she the only one who will make me put a wig on her that's, not like with no glue or something on her. Mm. So me having to transition from that, it's just be like it's just little things. But yeah. it's just it don't really be nothing. I don't really have pet peeves like that. Right. I just and that's another I don't know. It's just Yeah. Like, now there are a lot of stylists that are watching this interview right now and they're like, yo, man, I wanna I wanna be like Jonathan, man. I, I want that Bentley. I want that crib. You know what I'm saying? I want that that clout. Mm -hmm. What does it take? What what are a few things that, that you sacrificed to get to where you're at today? Friends, time, and dedication. Like, you gotta really be dedicated. You gotta have, you gotta strategically plan everything you wanna do. Like, you gotta know what you wanna do. You gotta actually go for it mm -hmm. and really be determined for this. Like, when you want something, you know, when you know what you want, you gonna go get it. And can't nobody stir you no different ways. So I feel like a lot of people need to reframe their focus. Mm -hmm. On they selves, on building they selves, on getting further in life, just like just being a better you for yourself, you know. So mm -hmm. I just feel like a lot of people need to plan and execute their plan. Yeah. Now you know you have a lot of clout, but what when it comes to like the actual like work, like hands work, what do you feel like? Why do you feel like people gravitate to you? Is it something you do differently than other I hairstylists? Work. I work. You work. I really work. Like every day I'm working. Every day. I'm traveling. I'm showing them, like, I'm showing them everything, you know? Yeah. That's why people gravitate to me. They connect with my energy. They connect with the realness. And it's not like, no, oh, you know, he just doing this. Like, I don't, I'm not even a flashy type person. Like, mm -hmm. so, like, I don't even show my cars off, my house, none of that. But it's like, people see it, you know? People see it, look, glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. And it's real work, you know? It's yeah. real work behind it. Me doing her everyday stuff. You know, slaving. I started from doing my clients, then to start back traveling with my celebrity clients. So they see the work through everything, you know? Yeah. Um, were there anybody who didn't believe it you at first? Not everybody coming around? Like fake people, love? A lot every, of fake love? You know, you know, I feel like that's life. That's part of life. But you can't pay attention to that type of stuff. Because then that throw you off your balance of what you going for. Mm -hmm. When you got a lot of people you already know that you're going to run into that's fake, that's coming around just for opportunities and all that, but you just got to stay on your ground and your feet to know where you're going. Yeah. You can't just pay attention to that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you're only 22 years old and you and you have all this shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what other goals do you have? Like, you, 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 have, you have all this so early. That's, my goal, see, the thing is, I'm, my goal ain't to, my goal is to be legendary. How Michael Jackson is, how, Kanye and them is, like how they is, that's my goal. So whatever I got to do to get there, that's where I'm going after. Like this material stuff, that ain't nothing, you know, because at the end of the day, a person can be up today, down tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. This stuff can be in your hands today, gone tomorrow, but you just got to have, you just got to give them what they, you know, you got to inspire the world because it's people that's coming up, the new generation. Mm -hmm. You just got to want to change that, and that's what my goal is. Yeah. Do you plan on opening your own shop soon, or...? Yeah, I got uh, that in the works. That's in the works. Uh, actually, a school. A school. I'm trying so, to do like a her school. Yeah, so you'll be teaching people and stuff like that. Teaching classes and stuff. How how was school for you? Like when you when you went to school to get your hair done. I mean to to do hair to learn how to do hair. Did you already know how to do it, or was see, it I, new for you I too? Go, see, I started doing hair without going to school, mm. so it came naturally. The only reason I went to school because I just felt that I knew that I was gonna blow up, you know. So I was like, I didn't want nobody to be like. Oh, he ain't got no license. So I only went to go get my license. Yeah. I ain't, you know, basically when I was in there, I was schooling him. Yeah. So it was like, you know. What do you feel like the biggest misconception is of Jonathan? Like, what, are, what, do, you, what do you feel like people, you know, have confused about you? People don't fully know who I am. Mm. People don't even fully know who I am. Like, people don't know. Like, it's just a whole lot of stuff that's about to, you know. Unveil, yeah. 2020 is yeah. about to be lit. Yeah. I don't know what people have. I don't be current. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, I really don't be current. But I see a lot of people talking about 
my dating life. When you say your dating life, what do you mean by that? Like people be thinking like, oh, who do we date? Do he date girls? Yeah. Do he date dudes? Yeah. Like I don't do none of that. You know, I just don't date because I be so focused on the grind. Yeah. People don't know the value of like relationships. Like I don't get into all that, you know? Yeah. So that's just like all... I just don't begin into all that, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. it's just like not even part of it. Yo, but when I'm on your Instagram, when I was on my Instagram doing my research, I seen a lot of bad women. Yeah. Are you, do you get attracted to these women no, or are you I hitting these women? Me. Like, like, you know. Because no, <laughs> it's business. One thing okay. It's business, but I have got attracted to, you know, some people. But yeah. it's more so I try to control, like I control myself because it's like it don't need to get there. Or it don't even, it's not even what that is, you know. Yeah. Or it's just like, but I'm not even that type of person that be into the dating shit. Right. How was it when you first start doing hair with people? Did people start people, looking yeah, at you crazy? People was, but at the end of the day, like I got so many dudes that was talking, and now they talking about they want to do her. I done seen yeah. like I done literally had a street nigga, a trapper, um, actually take a hair class. From wait, me. wait, 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 wait! A real trap nigga, like a real trapper, like take a hair class. And just really trying to get like yeah. in on you know this is a billion dollar industry. Yeah, the the beauty industry is one a billion dollar industry. So wait, a real street nigga. Real street nigga. Let me ask you this, and I want to, and I'm going to keep it all the way real. If a nigga gets in this female dominant industry, does it mean that they're gay 100? percent That don't mean nothing. If, they, you are, if you a hustler, one thing about it, if you a hustler. Yeah. You a hustler. Yeah. And if you got to feed your family, you got to feed your family. So you got to do what you got to do. Like, you around women. You around women making them look good. Like, how do they make you gay? Like, yeah. how do they make you... How do they put... So that's another thing. Like, that's another reason why, even with my goals, like, I can't label nothing. Like, can't you can't... La can't nobody label you for nothing because at the end of the day, you just do what you do. You you can fix your mind at the last minute and say, look, I'm about to do this. Yeah. So, that can... That, you know... You gonna put your, a label on yourself because this is what you choose to do or what you gotta do to get to where you need to be. Yeah. That's why I say like I'm not even gonna like this is my now situation. You know me doing her now. Like from ten years from now, I'm not gonna be doing her. Hopefully, I'll be a motivational speaker, inspiring the world. You know or whatever. But it's more so like you gotta do what you gotta do to get from where you at in life. Yeah. Were you kind of scared at the beginning to to jump off that porch into this lane? Nope. Thinking about like what your mom or probably your dad thinks about you know you doing people's hair. Mm -mm. You never you never second guessed it. No, I'm a fire. I'm a fire. I'm a fire sign. Like I'm that type yeah. of person. I do. I whatever I fix my mind to is there. Yeah, it's stuck there. Like I'm not changing it. I'm doing it. Even if I fail, like I learn from it. Now I know how to do it yeah. better. But you got to keep learning from them situations, and you can't let nobody else. One thing about it, I always this is what I say true to. I never let nobody else tell me what I'm going to do. I always go on, if this is what I want to do, I'm going to learn from it. Because everybody else learned from their own stuff and got to where they need to be. I'm going to learn and I'm going to keep making mistakes and I'm going to keep learning from them. And that makes me who 